knowing that your team is growing, are there any challenges? What are they? And how are you addressing these challenges? If there are any? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great question. There are always challenges that come along when your team grows. I think in the history of SEMF, we've sort of gone through a few different phases of, of team size. Right now we're closing in on 100. And I think one of the big challenges that we face right now is keeping our culture, right? Like we really invested heavily in keeping our culture. And as you grow a company, it becomes really challenging to think about how do we make our culture stick with us. Albert, you've been talking about this. You had some interesting conversations. What are your insights? Yeah, all I can think of is I'm staring at that until over there, <laughs> just at the appropriate time that you asked this question, which makes me think like this is like a super organism or like they're aligned in what they do, even though there's a lot of them. So yeah, growing presents its own set of challenges and primarily because humans are not like ants, um, where, you know, they're, they, they have a hive mind. Uh, each person is unique and they have their own way of thinking. And, and when it's a smaller team and a smaller company, um people can be aligned quite easily but as you grow and as we're growing it that becomes a serious challenge of keeping that alignment and so it to be honest it becomes harder to get things done quicker uh in a large uh, larger team and larger company so what i i'm where my mind is at like trying to figure out how to stay agile while growing but it's like saying like oh how can you be a big dinosaur and be fast, right? There's a reason why Velociraptors are like small and very agile, but and T Rexes are kind of like do do do. You don't really see like a Velociraptor the size of a T Rex that can move really quickly. But that would be amazing if we can be that. <laughs> but, <laughs> the dream of every corporation. <laughs> yeah, we're big and fast and, fast. and all things beautiful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's the major challenge is deciding on when you step on the anthill. So that Sorry. might be bad for your feet. Yeah, so that's a major challenge. Okay. Do we just continue? Um, what do you think about the Web3 scene? Ooh. Oh, wow. Loaded question right now. <laughs> um, yeah, we're in the aftermath of the FTX liquidity crisis, um, looking like it's headed towards bankruptcy. We're actually in Singapore right now um, where Binance is headquartered, but actually doesn't have a license to operate. So users in Singapore can't use Binance um, to buy crypto and things like that. So Binance was looking like they might bail out, but then after some of their due diligence decided that no, um, they, they can't. So Web3, what do I think about it? Um, I still think there's a lot of good principles in the Web3 movement, and I'm just lumping it into Web3. So I'm talking about crypto, I'm talking about blockchain. I think there's a lot of good underlying technology and principles that can democratize things, that can open things up. So I still have a lot of belief in the principles of where we're going. But I think as with all revolutions or sort of all things that start like this, you have a lot of failure. Um, you have a lot of big explosions in the beginning. Um, this is kind of like the wild, wild west still. So it's very risky. Um, if you're asking me for investment advice, this is not investment advice. But do I think the potential for some of the principles are there? Yeah, but we're gonna go through a few iterations. How about you, Albert? So, okay, maybe I'll rephrase the question. Um, what do you think about Web3 Albert? 10, 20 years from now? Will it disappear or will it be more prominent in people's lives? And I think it's gonna be more prominent in people's lives. Will it look exactly the way it looks like right now? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe even I would say I don't think so. And I don't think it will replace everything that is in Web 2, right? Or what the web looks like right now. I think it will coexist, but will it become a more prominent, um, you know, figure or or part of people's lives 10 years from now i would say definitely i would say i am 100 percent sure that web3 and its principles and its technology will play a much more major part of people's lives come 10 15 years from now okay is web3 and metaverse the same <laughs> oh, <I don't> <laughs> web3 and metaverse 
Yeah, I would, I mean, my definition would be no, but I'm sort of, uh, I'm on the tech side of things and I'm delineating between things. I think the metaverse in general um, is, is still pretty undefined, you know, although a few large companies have sort of taken some name claims to meta and other things related to that. Um, I, I would say that Web3, the way that I view Web3 is that it's a bigger, a bigger and maybe more principled technology, whereas the metaverse is more focused on, I guess, the next phases of XR, which would likely be connected to, but not, um, not solely inclusive to all of Web3. I love your face. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I thought, okay, so Web3 and Metaverse are strictly not the same thing, but they have a huge overlap and they're interrelated. And what I mean by this is, we'll just define it one by one, right? I think Web3 is more of the technology that powers, you know, the new web hence Web3. And what this means is like the core principle of decentralization, um, where you have this layer of web and you can access the web, but it's not centralized. And you can perform transactions on this web and it's not centralized, it's decentralized. And that's like the Web3 concept there. You're hosting applications, you're hosting data, not on centralized servers, but on a decentralized blockchain, for example. And that's the Web3. And that's very interesting because now you have more resilient in the wake of FTX in liquidity, <laughs> but you have more resilient systems and um, way of transacting of asset, digital asset um, assignment and ownership. And so now you have, it's like not some, like one single company can then disappear and take all your assets with you, which is so ironic to talk about in the light of the FTX thing actually. But I wouldn't say FTX is like a, is a Web3 thing. FTX as a company is a centralized thing. And I think yeah. that's what people need to understand that FTX is not Web3. FTX is doing some stuff on Web3. They are not Web3 themselves. But the principles of Web3 do power the metaverse. So what is the metaverse? Basically, metaverse is just another layer of reality. right? So for example, what is our layer of reality? Right now, we interact with each other. We own assets like we own property we own land we own cars but really do we own these things like ownership is such a just a civilization construct the so social construct it is not real real it's not like laws of physics decided that you will own property yeah right you we don't have such things but we as a society created this new real reality which is people can own stuff and society enforces that now with web3 it extends into this digital assets where you can start to own things that you don't even see. I mean, that are not in the physical world. Like for example, NFT art, you know, mm -hmm. NFTs, like these are not physical stuff. They are digital. And now society has provided a way for us to own these things using Web3 technologies. And so this whole concept of the metaverse is just another universe of things and the way society has said like that you cannot participate in this new reality that we've created as a society and that's the metaverse now when people say metaverse sometimes you always just think virtual reality but it's not equal as well to me metaverse is anything that's not real but society can make it real like owning stuff on the internet in web like nft like how can you own a picture right but in the metaverse, you can, if enough people are convinced, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's a social construct. It's a social construct, construct, construct that yeah. goes beyond the physical world into the digital world. Right. And that's the metaverse. Yeah. And again, like, you know, there's even land. You can buy land in the metaverse, right? But again, it's on this underlying Web3 technology, yeah, yeah. like the blockchain. Because imagine if you can buy land on the metaverse, but then it's because, for example, Google is selling it to you or a centralized company like Facebook or a company is selling it to you and you buy land from them and those that land in the digital world is hosted on their servers, then it's not resilient, meaning if they close, it disappears, Yeah. right? If, if um, that company that sold you the land 
if they close down then it disappears it's not technically the metaverse it's not re it's not resilient to, to to sustain over a long time but with decentralization like web3 not a single company will host those things right it will be society as a whole so what upholds the metaverse is society so the moment society then crumbles then that's pretty much the end right but it's much more resilient than just a single company <laughs> you know owning that yeah okay so i hope that made sense yeah that made sense um so being a technology company, is Simf participating in this Web3 and Metaverse scene? If so, what are the activities that you have in your company or, you know, things that you are doing with regards to these technologies that we're talking about? Okay, because I'm a tech guy. Um, <laughs> so the, answer, the short answer is yes, we're participating. Into what capacity? So for example, in Web3, there are there's technology. So number one, people are working on stuff that are Web3 related. Um, there are specific technologies that you need to learn in order to participate in the Web3 or to build stuff on Web3. So we're doing that. There are some people in SIMF actually doing that. Um, I would say we are also putting efforts to make everyone more excited about this concept of Web3. And this is where company crypto bonus yeah. comes in, like where we give people bonuses in crypto. In crypto. And yeah, of course, it like fluctuates with the nature <laughs> of crypto. But yeah. that's the whole um, concept is by giving people crypto, you allow them to start owning assets in this Web3 yeah. um, that allows them to start to dabble into it and participate when otherwise they might not if we did not give them anything. So maybe I'll throw that question back to you. Like, what did you do with your crypto? <laughs> what NFTs? <laughs> Swap. Okay. Pooling, nice. farming. How about you, Dave? Yeah, I mean, I think we we aren't building a Web3 startup at this time. You know, we haven't really... We have some ideas, though. Yeah, we have some ideas, but we haven't built anything yet. Now, we have a couple of clients who I would say are either in the Web3 space or want to move more towards the Web3 space. Um, the way that I use Web3, actually, Metaverse is part of that, right? So if they're already doing stuff in the Metaverse, I, I kind of see Web3 as the overarching um, technology term that, that I would use. Um, and Metaverse is just a component there. Then I think, um, you know, there is a project we're working on right now. I can't go into a lot of detail, but we are using a lot of the tools of, say, like NFT creation to do some interesting things with art and design. And so I'm excited about that. I think again, as Albert mentioned, I don't know that Web3 is just gonna wipe out Web2, right? Like even if you look back at Web1 to Web2, it, it isn't just this like suddenly one turns off and the other one turns on. There will be progressions. There will be things that work in Web3 and there will also be things that just don't work in Web3. And we have a lot to figure out. Web3 is very early and young. Um, you know, if you're looking into the Web3 space, I would say go for it, dive into it, learn about it, but have a real, a real trajectory that it's probably five to ten years before it really goes mainstream. You know, and, and I say that just to give you a balance of your perspective. Like, don't study this now and then in six months expect like your parents to pay you in crypto. Um, I don't know that that's gonna happen, right? But should you be wise about it? Should you be getting in early? I think there's an opportunity there. Again, this is not investment advice, but I think learning the technology, having your feet wet, knowing what's going on, knowing some of the core principles there will serve you very well for the future.